Okay, so the next thing we're going to try is to prevent our contractor user here from locking in or coming in through the employee tunnel group. And what we're going to use is known as the tunnel group lock and that we're going to want to make sure that the contractor is only coming in through the contractor tunnel group and then placed into the group policies that he actually belongs. Okay, so since our user that we have here is local, so let's do a show run username real quick. Here, our username contractor, what we're going to do is to do a per user attribute for this uh, local user. So username contractor one attribute, and you can see with the question mark, you can attach the number of of the attributes option to this particular user. The one that's of uh, interest is the one that called group lock. So the description is enter the name of self existing tunnel groups that the user is required to connect with. Okay, so for our group lock, we're going to lock down this particular user to only come in through a tunnel group call SSL contractor. Okay. That's pretty much all you need for the local user. Now going back to our test machine here, and it's trying to lock in as employee for this particular user. So contractor one. Since so you can see that now the authentication has failed. Okay, it's supposed to have succeeded earlier. And this is because the user is trying to lock in or coming in through a different group. Now let's try the contractor group one more time. Make sure that still works. So contractor one Cisco. Okay, you can see that can successfully authenticate right there. Okay, there's also a similar radius attribute for the group lock as well. If you if your user happens to come in or authenticate against the radius server, so the group lock kind of solved the problems of user accidentally locking in or intentionally rather also uh, locking into a or in an ended up in a different group policies. But now you still might face an issue where, you know, now the user needs to know exactly which group they need to lock into. And although now if they pick a wrong group, the authentication will fail, but still the user needs to choose the group that he needs to, to choose, basically. And that might not be such a good user experience. So what we're going to try to do next instead of using the group lock. So let me remove the group lock. What we're going to do is to, regardless of which tunnel group the user is coming in from, we're going to place them into a specific group policies. And this is by using the option right here, VPN group policy, question mark, and then we're going to put them into SSL contractor. Okay, so instead of locking down the tunnel group, now we are locking down the group policy instead. Now let's go back and lock in as, let's try employee one more time with contractor one, and Cisco. You can see that now, even though the user is coming in through a employee tunnel group, now we are getting the banner that belongs to the contractor group policies. And that's because we kind of forced the user into the group policies using this VPN group policies command right here. And we can just verify that also with uh, show VPN and web. It's right here, coming in tunnel group as the employee, but ended up in the group policies called contractor. Lockout. And obviously, if you try the contractor also, we also ends up in the contractor group policy. So now it doesn't really matter which tunnel group the user it's coming in as. And that kind of solves the issue of user picking an incorrect tunnel group right here. Then the question is, why do we even want to have multiple tunnel group at this point? because if the tunnel group doesn't really matter, well, there might be a situation where you want to have a unique settings for the tunnel groups, whether it's a customized login page, so you can have a different login page for different groups of users, or like I mentioned earlier in this video, it's the authentication method. So if you have one group coming in as a regular username password, the other one as a certificate authentication, then that's when you would need multiple tunnel. Okay, so, but if that's not the case, what we can just do is get all the user to come in through the default tunnel group. And then we just use the forced user into different group policies. And that way user doesn't really need to keep track of which URL or which drop down they need to select. So now let's go ahead and delete the tunnel group list. So web VPN, and then let me get rid of this. And that's pretty much put us back to the, I think we're still under the user. 
get out of that here right there. So that should be gone now. So if you go back to our default lock-in page, the drop-down is gone and now we are back at the default tunnel group. And to, again, just to one last time demonstrate that what we just did for our contractor user, forcing it into a contractor group policy also works with the default tunnel group right here. You can connect and show VPN right there coming in through default tunnel group ended up in contractor group policies. Okay, so what we've already done is using the per user attribute for the local users to switch user into a different group policies. So we did all that. The next thing we're gonna do is to actually use the radius servers to do that because most likely your users will be authenticated against radius servers and there is host possibly integrates with the AD backend. So what we have here is our I server. But first, let me show you on our Active Directory, the user that we have created for our testing. And that's the contractor user one right here. So it's a almost corresponding a, a contractor account, but this time the account, instead of being local on ASA, it's uh, on the Active Directory. And the username is contractor one underscore AD, just to signify it's an AD account. And it's a member of, a contractor AD group. Okay, pretty straightforward. And here's our contractor AD group. Now on the ICE server, here I've logged into our ICE server at the IP of .102. And this is something that we have pre-configured and actually we have a separate video, uh, ICE video, uh, ICE 1.2 video for this, for VPN authentication against ICE that have extensively explained how to configure all this. But let me kind of step through real quick just to give you an idea of what we have configured. So here for our policy set, we have one for VPN and that's looking for NASPort type virtual and our firewall. For our authentication policies, it's just a regular cert AD local guest that's uh, in that order. And then for our authorization, we have our contractor grouped created uh, from the AD. So it's what's looking for external group contractor. And then when that match, the permission, which is the authorization profile, VPN underscore contractor will be pushed down. So let's go over and take a look of that. And here under the authorization profile, let's look under VPN contractor, you see right here, let me scroll down. We are pushing down the OU of SSL underscore contractor. So that name is matching our group policies that we created on the ASA. And we also have an additional radius attribute and it says a type Cisco VPN 3000 and that's called tunnel group lock. So we also locking down the tunnel group and make sure that this particular user is only coming in through our default web VPN group. And if you can't find this particular attributes in your list, and that's because that might not be built into the default radius dictionary. So what you might need to do is to go under the uh, dictionary right here, get under the system and you see the radius. It's just to kind of more FYI in case you go out and try to find that attribute under Cisco VPN 3000. And this is where you can come in and pretty much if the attribute that you want to use cannot be found in this list, then you can pretty much add it yourself. And obviously that has to be supported by Cisco. So you can look up the Cisco documentation and see which attribute is being supported. And you can pretty much create it and have the matching types and everything. And then it will show up on your list. Okay. So that's what we have to do for the tunnel group lock. And now we specify tunnel group that the user has to be coming in from. All right. So that's pretty much the setup on the radius server and the AD. So now let's go back to our firewall one. You have to configure it to use the radius server. So command is triple A dash server. Name it radius protocol. Obviously it's radius. Although ASA is capable of integrating with different user database directly, whether it's Cobras, LDAP, or even the RSA server. Okay, for us it's radius. And then for the insight host, 172.16.32.102. Just specify retry interval three. Uh, what else? Just some basic command here. Uh, timeout. Actually, um, it will be number of seconds. So two. 
and then key is Cisco. Okay, obviously we have the firewall added as a network device on the ICE already with the matching key Cisco. Although I didn't quite show you that, but it's, that's just already been done. Actually, let me do a show. If you do show tunnel group, you can see that we don't see anything with our default web VPN. And that's because those are a default configuration. What you have to do is do a show run all and then uh, tunnel group. Okay, so you can see, looks like I had a pager zero on. So let's do um, term page 40. Okay, so let me scroll up and see if I can find the default with VPN right here. So just copy and paste, and then we are want to modify the authentication method. So authentication server group, instead of local, we're gonna do radius. And now that is no longer a default configuration. If you do show run, tunnel group one more time, you can see that the part of the configuration shows up on the show run now. So that should be all we need to get the ASA to use Radius server for authentication for our default web VPN group. So now let me clear the screen and then do a debug radius so we can watch or look for the radius authentication messages. Now on our test VPN, make sure we go back to the login page. Let's go ahead and log in with our contractor one AD Cisco. Okay, so you can see that. We have successfully authenticated using that AD account. And obviously we got placed into the contractor group policies because of that banner. Now let's do a quick review on the debug. So I didn't quite clear the screen completely. Okay, right here. So radius request went out, username, contractor one AD. It's got all the IPs of the NAS and user. Before we look at the response, We'll come back to eyes, look at the operation. For the authentication, we should see a green right here. Authentication success for our contractor 1AD with authorization profile VPN contractor. And should be a radius response that's coming back from our radius server. Username right here, class OU for our SSL contractor. And it's also returning the Tunnel group for the group lock. So it's actually the ASA that's making use of this particular radius attribute right here, just to make sure the user is coming in uh, through a correct tunnel group. Okay, so you can see it's a radius accept. And now if you do show VPN session database web, you can see that here the user is coming in through default web VPN group and get placed into SSL contractor group policy. Okay, now just to kind of demonstrate the group lock, the attribute that we have returned from the radius server. Let me kind of clear it completely this time. Make sure our debug still there. We still have let me show run ton of group. We still have the group URL for the employee right here that we can try to test with. So now let's assume that this particular contractor is trying to come in through the employee group URL. Okay. And then trying to lock in with this own account, contractor1 underscore AD, then Cisco. Actually, I forgot to modify that uh, SSL employee group, uh, tunnel group to use the radius at the radius server. So let me do that real quick. So it will be the same as this command right here. So authentication server group for SSL employee, pointing to radius. Let's try that one more time. Contractor one AD Cisco. Okay, now we, we saw the radius request went out. Login has already failed, but if you look at the radius response or reply, you can see that it came back with accept, but somehow the ASA is not letting this particular user in, and that's because the group locks mandates the ASA that the user must be coming in through the default. Web VPN group are ton of, but instead this particular user is trying to access the VPN from the employee ton of group.
Okay, so user didn't really fail the authentication. It's the authorization on the ASA itself with the group lock that's failing it. Okay, so what we have configured in this lab is pretty much we've gone through these access scenarios except the certificate mapping. And now we have the users coming in through the default URL, getting placed into the default WebVPN group, and then using our radius servers to return the group policies information and then have the ASA place the user into that corresponding group policies. So now we, from our future lab, we're not going to be using the group URL or group list anymore for these particular users. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that up. So we show it on tunnel group. And the quick way to clean that up is to do a clear config. And then they will clean up the whole thing. Same thing here with the SSL underscore employee. Okay, do you show run ton of group? You can see now we are left behind with the only default web VPN group configuration that we have. Everything else gets deleted. Okay, so these are going to be our configuration moving forward using the default web VPN group for the most part and then using our radius server for authentication. Okay, and that wraps up our video on SSL VPN, tunnel group, and group policies. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmits.com, and I'll see you guys in the next videos.